And as you all rush into the main area, standing before you is a person, a figure. A humanoid, maybe female, pulls back a dark, thick hood. And as they do, you can see the lower half of their jaw is almost entirely mechanical, as if it has been removed and replaced behind the eyes and along the neck stem, more tech and wires. What are you doing here? You're supposed to be on sabbatical. My, My time, time is up. up. I, I have been sent. sent. As the machine's emissary. Hi, I'm I'm Tal. You, you are the captain, captain of this vessel. vessel. I am too bit. It's nice to meet you. Um, I've heard a vague thing or two about you at one point, so it's nice to have a more clear picture of you. I, I hope, hope it is satisfying. satisfying. Yeah. Sorry. Um. I. Um. I don't exactly know what uh, we're doing here aside from doing everything we can to get from where we're gonna land and hopefully in Lil Algol to uh, Tamir, where, where's that map that you have of the monolith? Uh, we, we need to get you into the monolith, but uh, I, I don't know what we're gonna encounter between the two places. What do you know of the monolith? We know it's a weapon. We know a that... It, it seems that you have been misinformed. The monolith is not a weapon. It is a shield. Built many generations ago, long before any of the human ships arrived. Created by the icons to keep the darkness at bay. I imagine that a shield can be used as a weapon. That is not his intended purpose. The First Horizon has come to turn them on in their own way. Can you not hear it as we get closer? You don't hear it at first, Tamir, but when Tubit tells you to kind of like listen, you actually do think that you hear something. The song of the monolith, this ringing, you've heard it before. You heard it around the emissary, the time that they died in the swamps, which you are about to pass over. You heard it once before on the other side of the galaxy, once in a vision, this song that rings out. And now you know that it has been coming from the monolith. And it's not just singing, it's calling. Now that you can hear it, you feel this draw, this want uh, to come to the monolith. You do hear it, the song. It pulls at the mystics, drawing everyone to the monolith. The First Horizon is not interested in us having a shield. They're interested in tearing them down. I have been sent by the machine to turn this monolith on. I have also been sent with a message. The machine is a calculating and wise icon, often devoid of empathy, but not entirely. Every icon has an emissary that walks this plane. When I am gone, she would like it to be Tamir, but the choice is yours. So I come bearing information and an offering. You do begin to connect with it and you can feel yourself being drawn and you've been, you kind of went through a similar process when you attempted the exorcism from Lamara. As you begin to get drawn in, you can feel it and it's a strong connection. You did it, you did it. And it begins to crack the ball.
glass shatters across the space and there's a moment as it rains to the ground. This black spiral of clouded smoke that was touching your hands shoots up in front of you and takes form. Your form. You stare at yourself, standing tall above you. I can do a fair share of many things. The wish often provides me the extra oomph to get the job done. That's how this works. And it's about this time you see her head kind of turn towards the wall and tip a little bit as if she hears or feels something. Who else is here? Well, it is a ship, so therefore it has a crew. No. And from behind, like one of the draped pieces of fabric, steps a child. <gasps> you no. She turns with squinted eyes and looks at you, and she says, what have you done? I didn't know it was here. Hello, baby. She looks at this child. He smiles. Hi, sister. Oh. Can I? And he looks at you with such hope in his eyes that today may be the day. Make your wish. You have to make your wish. Do it now, Alia. Make the wish. You have to. Can it's I, the only way. Make what wish can I do you want. with this wish that you can provide? I don't oh. know if you can fulfill this. You have given me no information that I can go off where I can trust you that you can accomplish what I need. Alia, I am a demon. If you think that wishes don't come with consequences, any actions don't come with consequences, you are wrong. No, you can take your wish. Or well, I suggest that you leave this space because only one of us gets to walk out of here. I wish that you will do whatever it takes, even if it means sacrificing yourself to save the people of the Third Horizon. However long it takes, whatever you need, even if it is meaning that you must be in the way, whether it means you become an emissary. You hear Babir go, no, as he kind of reaches out because he can't consume her if she has to fulfill a wish. She smiles this big smile. You wish for me to do whatever it takes to save the people of the Third Horizon. That includes the people of this ship. It includes my family, it includes me, and okay. you will bring no harm to them. I will bring no harm to them. Give me some time. This is a very large wish. I will see you again, Liberator. So you know exactly what's going on. Why would you ask? Yeah, but like, I barely know. It's a shield now? Who's going to believe that? That's not tangible. Uh, uh. You know who's going to believe that? When they hear this son of Algol stand up and ask the people who've been oppressed all this time. Are they? Because Algol just got glassed. So who knows what my word stands for? Well, there's only one way to find out. Who would these people want to hurt more? Where would they find, want to find justice? In the person who is standing up against the oppressor or the oppressor? We suffered great misjustice in Algol, and the people of Algol continue to suffer today. But you, Malik, has struck a chord with these people in a way none of us could ever imagine. I, yeah, I, I guess, man. If that's what, if that's what needs to happen, then. I'll figure it out. Arise, minions, and welcome to Unmade Gaming. We are here for the 51st annual, no, the 51st episode of Void. This is the finale, season four, two years in the making. Space Jesus is here. We're ready to go. We're ready to do stuff. We're ready to do things and stuff. I have a speech. Uh, Dot, the, uh, you guys know what to do. Find the things in the description. Go do the stuff. Dot, go. Space. All right. All right, all right. As always, we are far too limited on time to tell the stories that we always want to, but tonight it must come to an end. And last week, as you saw, our crew is making a last and very daft effort to reach the monolith on the planet of Kua, uh, the monolith sitting directly below their home of Coriolis. The crawler is your means of transportation, and it cuts through dense everglades wetlands you can hear the squishing of the mud on the outside of this dense metal tank that is basically airtight um 
as all of you are ba- a strap to the wall um if you're sitting if you're not you're hanging on to like something and it's rattling as it roars through leaving big track marks you have chosen if i remember correctly to cut through uh the most direct path possible which actually does not take you through the city but through this kind of swampy uh unestablished area you can hear trees um cypress is breaking down to the side as you crunch through and eventually you see the first sign of like taller buildings out the front who's driving that would be me tal just give us before we jump into our travel montage a quick piloting check okay do i get anything for the crawler i don't think i do uh Um, just my normal just my normal uh, piloting check. And... Yeah, so I think this is just your regular piloting check because there's nothing special here for this. So just a flat yeah. roll. No, okay. All right, all right. And that's at zero. All right, let's go. First roll of the night. That Whoa! is in four. <laughs> okay. I was yeah. going to use our first corruption bar uh, to cause a little bit of problem with travel, but at a four. So uh, you break out of the swampy area and you hit kind of solid gravel is what I'm going to say. It's probably packed sand and rock um, from uh, at least this far out. And you can see Tao as you have made a very clear cut path through the swamp to the city. When you get to the civilized area, uh, what should be residential, there are very few people here. In fact, you don't see anyone. Some of these buildings burn a little bit from the inside and still smoke where maybe there has been some conflict or fighting in this area. But you don't see like dead bodies laid around, but what you, you also don't see are any people whatsoever. And the crawler takes to the streets with ease as it tears through uh ara ara which is uh on the out direct outskirts of covenant city uh, um as, yeah. as i go through the streets i i look briefly very briefly back over my shoulder and i say hey malik now's uh probably a good time to start working on that speech don't you think uh, yeah, yeah 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 uh and the crawler continues with no problem, so travel's not going to be an issue. I'll give you that. Tal nailed that roll. So we will, in fact, go into a series of montages of what everybody else is doing along the way. It is a, a, a quite a bit of travel. You're going to look at about an hour because some of the city is a bit disheveled. Uh, areas are blockaded. Uh, more and more rubble as you get closer where buildings have been bombed or um, destroyed. But Malik, you had a message you wanted to get out to the people. Uh, You have kind of the back of the crawler. There's no table here. So you're building or putting together whatever radio broadcast you're doing, probably on the floor um, or on your lap if you're sitting on the floor. Um, Let's get that data gen roll and then we will get what you have to say. Uh, Okay. Let's see here. Let's let's uh, final final fuckery. Final countdown. Boop, I'll take two. I'll Beautiful. take two successes. Uh, did you have anything you wanted to add to that? Don't you have an ability? Uh, oh, you know you what? Die? Shit, I do. Die. Uh, okay. Well, no, uh, sorry. So I have an ability for um, manipulate. Uh, so the data gen roll will be to get the signal out. Um, okay. A, a manipulate right. we'll roll. We'll roll the will be manipulation to, to after your speech. Cool. Cool. Um, as with previous speeches, my goal would be to get this out as far as it can go, not just this um, See immediate how bro- area. See how wide the broadcast can get? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I would say at a limited success with the amount of downed towers, issues inside of the city, you tap into one of the only radio broadcast towers, and it's being used a lot uh, for military chatter. Uh, you break through that, so you're able to broadcast to the monolith and to Coriolis. Yeah, great. They'll figure it out. Um, cool. So yeah, he does this and hits the button, um, and um, through like the 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 grinding of rubble underneath the the, the wheels of this thing. <clears throat> People of the Third Horizon, brothers, sisters, I come to you again, though not as a son of Algol, not as the man the media has portrayed me to be, but as one of you. This message may be the final broadcast of the Defiant and in even doing so puts us at a great risk to what we are trying to accomplish. 
But as the people on board this ship have all found common purpose as a crew, so too must we find common purpose as people, as survivors. The First Horizon is here. They mean to destroy our way of life, and this war is but the first piece on the board. As I speak, the emissaries are moving to counter. Each one is poised to make their stand at the monoliths throughout the horizon, and they must make it to the monoliths. If you kindle even the smallest spark for the change we need in the Third Horizon, then you must do everything in your power to ensure the emissaries survive until their task is accomplished. This is the Defiant signing off. Icons be with you. And he hits the button. Malik's broadcast goes out across to all of Kua. Let's get a manipulation check. Cool, cool, cool. Um, so my talent dot is contingent on the amount of people who heard me. Ooh, that's a lot, a lot of people. It's a lot of people. Cool. So 100 plus people equals a plus four. Okay, we're going to say that this broadcast was successful Great. because you broadcast it out to more like 500,000 people. Cool. Let's see what I, let's see what I get here. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I'm going to give you a point for that. No. Wait. That, was, we need to, wait. Mike wasn't here he for the doesn't rule. know. Mike oh, doesn't know the Mike. rule. Tonight, there are no additions for darkness points. You cannot oh. re-roll. Well, shit. Let the fates decide. Here we are. You cannot re-roll. So, that Here was with are. your addition? That was with the additional bonus of, like, four? Yeah. Oh, my yeah. God. Shit. Okay. Okay. That is so many dice. One, two, three, four, five, nine, That's ten, so many. ten, That's eleven. So many dice. failures too. It's okay. You know what? Critical Mike. <laughs> Critical fails. <laughs> this <laughs> roll. Ba -ba 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 -ba. It's taken two fucking seasons, but we finally four got... four seasons. Take two four years. Four seasons. Now. Um, that I I kid. Uh, <sighs> it's okay. The broadcast still goes out. The question is just how does it affect the people? Mm. Well, we'll come back around to that. We don't we don't actually know. Uh our montage will cut to another member, another uh member of the Defiant. Alia. What does Ali what is Alia doing? Um now remember Tubit is in here with you as well as uh, Lamara as well. They're just kind of Lamara's like right in along for the ride. Tubit is very stoic holding um you know. Um do you see Alia how how big is this crawler? Like, is there enough? It, like, how it sits? It's supposed to seat six. Uh huh. Think of so it like three, a minivan yeah. with okay. spider legs. Gotcha. Yeah, gotcha. and it kind of crawls and along. Lots of controls. Uh huh. And it's got a lot of controls on the inside. The seats are against the walls, and it's open on the interior. You can see straight up to where Tal is like navigating this this thing. Gotcha. It's kind of like so, a tank. Gotcha. Uh, gotcha. Side note. Tal looks absolutely stoic and determined, but anybody who's witnessed her for a very long time, Alia, would definitely notice she is so fucking excited. She's like on the edge of her seat. Her eyes look bright. She looks alive right now. Beautiful. Beautiful. Um, you actually see then Alia is in the very back okay. of the of the crawler. Um, and she's not sitting in the seat. I would imagine just like any Humvee or like this sort of thing with a middle aisle like that with the seats on the side, there's floor space. And mm -hmm. you see Alia actually like sitting down crisscross on the floor and she's praying. And normally you would see Alia either on her knees or like in a much more diminutive position. But this time you just see her straight, very focused and what you guys until very recently didn't even know she had, she, she actually has taken out her dual sword and she's holding it in her hands. And in that process, she's praying to the Lady of the Tears, um, hoping if possible to communicate directly with her, um, but asking for her blessing, asking for her strength in all of this, in what we are trying to achieve in what, and hopefully get a strong outcome. Uh, but yeah, if possible, she would like to talk to the Lady of Tears directly. Okay, I'm gonna I am gonna have you roll a Mystic ability check if you want to try to talk to her directly. Okay. Um, um, and then before that, actually, um, the first thing she has done. Um, so she has the the new talent. I forget what it's called, but essentially, I would be able to provide everybody an extra dice. I believe, right? Blessing. Uh, 
it, 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 yeah. is it the same blessing? It's like I mass so. blessing. Yeah, it, mass blessing, which d will add and die. So if you do mass blessing, there's not really a role for that. It just happens. Mike, yeah. roll another so, dice. And then for uh, Mystic, right? Okay. Nope. Okay. Um, oh, ooh, another critical success. Well, I was going to say you can only speak with her if it's a critical success, but no, Alia, it is a it is a critical success. So who am I to who am I to stop you? And so, um, you say a blessing uh, upon everybody on the ship as you as as Malik's voice as he begins this speech kind of fades out, uh, and you become uh, really attuned to your breath and to yeah. the prayer. And you reach out to the Lady of Tears. And in this moment of extreme and necessary care, the Lady of Tears answers you. Alia. Tingles. Uh, um, and I think Alia, like she's still in that sitting position, eyes closed, but I would imagine like everything around her has is gone like she she's not in the crawler right now it doesn't feel like she's in the crawler. it's like an open space um and she opens her eyes and for the first time you see a sense of peace there's still there's still like that focus there's still a sense of wanting to do what's right but there's a sense of peace within her in who she is and she looks up at the lady of tears and she goes it's good to see you, my lady. Uh, honestly, at this point, I have nothing to really ask. Just, I want to thank you for being there for me throughout this journey and for being by my side, whether I knew it or not. I know, I can't even imagine how easy or hard it must be for you to do what you do, but. I'm who I am today because of what you helped me become and who you met, let me meet and who you brought together into my life. I guess I just have one last request. Please give me the strength to do what I must to protect what I love. And in that process, she holds the sword in her hand. I've always ran, ran away from what I believe to be violence and what I believe to be the wrong path. But sometimes I realized along the way that to protect what you love and what is right and what is pure, you yourself, me, need to, you may need to walk down the path of thorns. And I just ask for the courage and capability to do so. I can feel the darkness coming, Alia. It grows near. But I assure you, no matter how far you go, no matter to what distant star, I will always be there, as long as you allow me to be. Your blessings, your family, these are not gifts from me. These are your gifts to me. Icons do not exist to be worshipped. We exist because you allow us to. Your gifts are our gifts. I bless this sword with my tears. May it serve you as you protect our blessings. Thank you. Also, I don't know if, well, you probably, probably already know, but I, I don't know if I've messed up or if I did the right thing even, but if you saw how I dealt with the djinn, and I hope it was the right decision, but perhaps you can tell me if that's the course I should have taken. 
At the rate decision like... has consequences, Ali. But I have never distrusted you. You are good of heart. And whoever is taken by this sword, remember them. It is your job as an acolyte of the Lady of Tears to cry for them when no one else will. Even if it is you who has to take their life. Thank you. I just took that all I have. And I really wanted to just thank you for everything. And as you begin to say, I just wanted to thank you, and you begin to kind of um, remind her of how grateful you are. You're kind of snapped out of it, and the end of Malik's speech catches your ear, drawing you back to the rattle of the metal as it continues across the streets, drawing you ever, ever closer. Um, everybody can take a plus one to the next round of rolls for your montage. Um, I think the camera's going to cut to Tamir. What is Tamir up to? I think Tamir is going to take this time to get Tubit up to date, up to speed. Like, here's the information we have. Mm -hmm. Here's the blueprint, like old, but blueprints that may help. And I think he wants to let her know. Like, I, th I think he turns to her and just kind of says, uh, I may have made the mistake with Aurora. She is grown up. You mean changed? Updated, yes. Why do you fear this? There may be continuous change. There are protocols I I don't know or understand or would recognize yet. If it is just changed, Aurora, it is still Aurora. Do you need her back to be successful no. here? I gave her to you because I know that in the end, you will need her more than I do. Thank you. She's Thank you. Been, she's been the, the greatest gift anyone has ever given me. I imagine it will stay that way. You and her have a much larger part to play in everything that is about to happen. And what about you? What about no, I will part? play my part. And, and when it is all done, you will know what I mean when, when I say, say you and your friends must do everything that you can to leave when you can. I understand. Is there anything Anything unfinished for you? Anything that you still desire? I'd like to see how this all ends. But what I want isn't really important. Not anymore. These blueprints, they're misleading. In what way? It is no surprise that you thought it was, in fact, a weapon. The centralized hole that runs through the middle seems that it might be a barrel of some kind. Yes. They have a large power supply here, a core which could generate enough to... 
cause annihilation. This is the power, but not the control. This, this is the control. She points to the base, like, of the monolith, the bottom level. It kind of flips back a bunch of pages for you. And points kind of into the bowels under the ground. Mm -hmm. And removes a few in-between layers that she feels may not be necessary. And then re lays the rice paper down on top of each other. And you see something strange, Tamir, for the first time. I'm going to have you roll a science, or actually a technology check. Okay. Let's see if you figure it out before she me. tells you. And then this is with the plus one from the blessing? Yes. Because it's got to be on the mm -hmm. first roll. Okay. You see, it, it does make out a shape, but you cannot figure it out. And Tubit simply says, uh, kind of kind of draws with, with a metal uh, fingertip. This holds a weapon. Or a shield. Whatever you call it. This is a massive sword. It seems as if it may rise up the center shaft. What it does from there, I am not sure. Um. We have been wrong in our assessment. And with this new information, whatever you need, we are here and we will support you. Your mission is priority number one. Just remember, no matter what happens, no matter where you end up, your path will lead you back here. So far, it always has. And it always will. I must concentrate. I need to meditate before we enter the monolith. Please. And you see she kind of, you hear the whir whirling of some kind of hydraulic as her eyes kind of closed. Um, and she kind of goes into this meditative state um, as you draw closer. Um, you have gained the benefit of knowing that if you go up to the battery pack, there's not any way to control it from there. Uh, Tubit will be headed into this kind of basement level, which may change your plans. It may not change your plans. Um, I just, you know, you may still want to blow up the battery pack. Who knows? Uh, but you, you just know that Tubit is going to be headed down to this control panel. Um, and last but certainly not least, the camera pans to Tal. Tal. You have, uh, you are navigating the city with with great ease, uh, and you can see as you draw closer to Covenant City and the monolith itself, um, it is dent. The streets are getting denser with people. Uh, it seems that everybody is being drawn towards the base of the monolith. For what reason, you don't entirely know, but people are on the streets moving. Covenant City seems to be full of activity, and you can tell a lot of the buildings here have been destroyed. This has been the main point of activity for whatever ground uh, warfare is happening. So I'm starting to see people now, right? Yes, yes. Okay. Um, um, it's not dense enough that you can't move. Some people are like ooing and aahing a little bit as you come through, but nobody seems really concerned. They all seem very focused on headed heading it towards the monolith base. Um, I think that this is when I'm going to enact the traveler's talent to, um, get, uh, what is it? Uh, 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 I can ask you a question with two options. 
uh, and you have to tell me which one is uh, more beneficial to me uh, as a truth. Would it be okay. wiser to continue in the uh, crawler now or to get out and um, mm. try to go through the streets on foot? Because the biggest um, the biggest concern for Tal right now is being unnoticed by anyone who will actually stop them from mm. getting to the monolith. Do you um, do you not... speak to anyone along the um, way? Do you like stop and roll the window down? <laughs> uh... <laughs> or do you just try to deduce this on your own? Uh, I would try to deduce this on my own. Tal wouldn't think to ask some, ask okay, a person fine, walking down the street. She's not a social person. Uh, she's used to making decisions on her own. Uh, she might say in the background and, and like out loud. Uh, can you imagine though? Hey, excuse what are me. What are y'all doing out there? <laughs> what are y'all doing? You want some candy? Do, do you know Tony? <laughs> <laughs> excuse me, sir. Are uh, you going to the model? How far? Where are y'all going? Do you, is, is there somewhere to stop for a yeah. bathroom? A bathroom or right? I lost. Yeah. Rest stop. You say monolith. Um, now nah, y'all can't get there from here. Yeah. You go around. Um, you go around a block. All right. So you try to deduce to this on your own. Yeah. <laughs> you uh, get the idea that within a few blocks, the streets at the rate that you're seeing people now and the way, way they're kind of piling in, you're going to get to a point where there's no way you can get it through without stepping on people. You've only got a few. You're only a few blocks out. Um, okay. At this point, so, it may be better to go on foot. Yeah. So in that case, I'm going to uh, start looking for a place to park this that's not immediately noticeable. Like well, I'll find give it to someone's you. Yeah. backyard or something where they have like well, a, a a playground or something like that. Park it out like someone built a like someone built a spaceship this, in their um, backyard. <laughs> Okay. Uh, uh, what do you find? He, well, I'll tell you this. There's very little here other than cityscape. It's like yeah. uh, dirt and metal buildings built in kind of multi-story plateau style buildings. And they get taller as you get towards the monolith. Okay. You don't so see I'm a lot of for... playgrounds, but mm -hmm. you do catch a, a shelled out building. Um, from the street side, you can't see it, but you definitely can like kind of squeeze the crawler into the space um and with your incredible piloting check from earlier um from the outside this kind of spider-like tank uh i imagine just like a spider in a hole goes in on its like sideways right some legs first and then pulls itself in tell does an incredible job with kind of the maneuvering uh of this of this uh this tank and all of you hear it as it kind of like <laughs> comes to a thud and Tal finally cracks his smile and says, man, this baby handles like a dream. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we have to walk from here. Um, I, I can't get any further without starting to step on people. And this was possibly the best place I could have parked it so we can get back to it later if we need it. Uh, and then I will go in under the dash and start uh, doing the thing where I take a part that's completely needed uh, to right, start Right, so I can't it. go anywhere. So yeah. nobody else can take it. Uh, and I mm -hmm. put that in my little pocket. Yep. Um, does everybody suit up in the climbing gear? What is the, pl well, I guess what's the plan? Actually, some of you, you already are suited up. You're all wearing them. You wore, yeah. you put them on, yeah, you put them on under the defiant. the suits, yeah. Um, yeah, so you're already in suits. Um, sexy suits. Spider suits that you well, don't. The, sex is not Danny, required. I didn't say sex. I said sexy. Okay. So There's the difference. One thing that I swore that I would do was spend a darkness point for each one of your montages because I have them to spend. I'm saving my corruption. Mm -hmm. Um. Unfortunately, the broadcast does go out and it's heard by a lot of people, but there's a lot of varied opinions here in the city at the moment. A lot of refugees, uh, a lot of open mystics, which is something that's not often seen. And Malik's rebellious speech does in fact work. 
it incites a bit of chaos as varying sides of what should be done in this moment. Uh, the homogeny and those that support it here in this city stand up against those who attempt to rebel to the mystics. And the streets are beginning to break out in open fighting. People are beating each other. One darkness point. Boop, 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 boop. That's better than fighting us, I guess. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's just it's just like, it's a little volatile. The streets are vo super volatile right now, and a lot of people are looking for a fight, specifically uh, those supporting the homogeny. Um, Alia. Yes. You reached out to the Lady of Tears. She yeah. felt just as she would in, with her great and deep empathy the strain that is on every person in the third horizon right now not just here on kua but every planet that holds a monolith of all that the first horizon are trying to stop from being protected by these shields and it breaks her heart the icon the lady of tears and she begins to cry and the great clouds over kua begin to rain the sky opens up and you hear a great thunder in the distance as there is now rain to contend with along with the chaos outside. I bless the rains down in Kuwa. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> two bit uh, with our, our great seat to, uh, moment with Tamir. Um, Tamir, I swear I'd use a corruption bar, and I don't know how I want to do it. Um, I, you know what? I love you, Noam. Tamir knows, without a shadow of a doubt, that Tubit is not coming back. Um... And there is maybe a great sadness. I don't know that overtakes you. I don't exactly know how Tamir might feel in this moment. Um, or a great want to save them, perhaps. Um, but you know in your heart of hearts that 2-Bit, this, this is a suicide run for 2-Bit uh, from start to finish. Um, but there was something that 2-Bit said that also strikes you with some unease. She said, no matter where you are, no matter what time or place, as if she knew something that you did not. Um, as if this will not be your last mission. Tao. You know what? I'm going to save that one. That one's going to get saved. We're just, I, I have to narrate. In narration speaking, I have to save it. So, uh, I'm so nervous now. Uh, Y'all are able to get out of the crawler at the pace that you would like. Once you arrive, two bits like on her feet, ready to move, though she stands with great stoicness. Um, unless there's any hesitation, I will say y'all take to the streets. Yeah, we go to the streets. I think, like, as they're getting out, Tamir kind of updates the crew on the new on the revised plan letting mm. them know that they need to go down and not up to the power cells the control is where they need to be all right down it is i guess we got these seats for nothing i mean you look good in it kidding so. me my ass looks great <clears throat> thanks you you all walk away and you can begin to see kind of the violence on the street. Two guys are just beating each other. Um, and w there's some guy down the street that yells a, a slur at a mystic uh, as he throws rocks at this woman uh, who is desperately trying to march towards. I need everyone this close uh, that can, that can make a mystic ability check to make one. Okay. Not okay. bad, not okay. bad. Okay, all successes. This close, you absolutely can hear the song. It pulls at this invisible string in your chest as if 
as if you have to make it to the monolith, as if it draws you into it. It is a marching song. It is a lullaby to draw you into whatever is about to take place. Is Do we get any sense of why, or is, is there any sense of malice or it's or... getting it's getting louder which means maybe it's because more and more mystics are here it's strengthening the song okay uh, i mean do we it doesn't yeah. give us like a level of confidence or peace or is it just some sort of um, like no it, it it's a call it's a drawing it it, it is pulling you towards it um as if calling for all of you to 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 recede upon it and as you kind of march through the people and maybe you have to duck through some some grumpy people that are marching maybe some people throw some slurs at you who knows um but people are kind of some people hold signs some people hold weapons uh homemade weapons out of pipes and metal uh anything that can really be found i guess children are kind of hiding and running behind debris uh seeking shelter what you don't see as you all walk away is the decrepit building that you parked the crawler in collapses just a little bit burying the entrance to the crawler under heavy rubble doop, doop, doop. just scratching it dirt next point Arf. oh i already did that um okay so i have that was I have, that was for me that was that was for taos just, um yeah uh the talisman yes should be for rolls what do you remember what talisman it was I can't remember. Just says talisman plus one. It's above Great. my exosuit, so it's the first thing I got. Ah, perfect. Sure. Uh, yeah, I would say maybe you have some kind of blessed talisman. Maybe Julie gave it to you. Who knows? Uh, or I, you've I had it for it a while. Julie. But yeah. Um, <laughs> Darn. <laughs> um, that's okay. Keep it. We're not done rolling yet. Uh, and all of you begin to march through the crowd. It gets very dense. This is this is um. There are picketing lines. There are groups of people and women sobbing. Uh, there are uh, people screaming in unison, a kind of yelling on the streets. Um, you can tell that it is getting very, very tense. It seems that Malik's message did exactly what it needed to, and the rain has not helped with the large amount of kind of uh, disgruntled people uh, that are now convening along the monolith. Well, what's the plan here? Avoid getting killed? Yeah, get to the monolith. Uh, try not to die. And uh, yeah, we got to go down. If we get separated, go down. Yeah. Uh, I put my hand in my pocket and wrap my fingers through my brass knuckles and just have them ready for anybody that comes up uh, if if anybody tries to come at me. Two bit is now, yeah, yeah, go how, ahead. How crowded is it? Very. Y'all are like shoulder to shoulder with people. Okay, cool. Okay. That's it, just curious. Um, I'm going to need an infiltration check to get through these people without upsetting anyone or making it worse this is like pushing through a mosh pit at a really drunk molly hatchet concert this is like the worst possible scenario what a and it's raining yeah, yeah, molly hatchet. but you I, but you knew exactly what i'm talking about you know what i mean <laughs> no, no, i do want to be at this concert yeah <laughs> um cool question <laughs> alia of who she is this really large lady She's, you know, she's never had the chance to be sneaky or, or, you know, someone who can't stand out. I mean, she tries and she sometimes succeeds, but at some point she realized that her best effective method is pretending to be someone they shouldn't approach. In so -and -so. Uh, in <laughs> like to intimidate. Yeah, essentially to intimidate. Um, I, would, I would imagine that you see her like, not holding the sword out in front of her, but like clearly grasping it at her hilt like on the side and you see her like rise up to her full height like really just stand tall make a and manipulation check i don't have any anything in that relation. then just make the flat uh 
let me see manipulation yeah i don't have that i, ha I mean you I can you can, you can still make a manipulation check it's right, only the advanced um, skills i know i know oh come on oh! as you stand up some people kind of cower back um lumara giggles a little bit <laughs> uh from behind you uh thinking this is just a blast this is great <laughs> um she gives candy to a couple kids next to you uh, but as you stand up people do kind of part and it begins that process of like uh if you've ever been to a concert with a tall friend you follow them through the the crowd of people um yeah, you follow them right behind her yeah, yeah, yeah. and just and you kind of where if anybody like, goes to grab I'm like her like moses trying to part the sea of people all right <laughs> so you start uh kind of weaving through uh this crowd of people a lot easier and all of you kind of grab a piece of clothing or a belt or a hand as you stay stick together or able to stick together and you kind of make it to what is considered the front and you can see it there's a mass barricade and the homogeny stands on the other side with guns and it's like man by man like just person person shoulder to shoulder to shoulder they they line the entire base of the monolith uh they have these kind of shields that keep people out um as they're kind of pushing and shoving and people are throwing things at them uh and because we have a corruption bar and i i just can't help myself in the rain the pouring rain it's now just like coming down on top of you thunder and lightning in the distance very, as very you all frightening. get to where you are you look to your left and there stands charity she has a microphone in hand and she's wearing this kind of hat that keeps the rain off of her face as it drips uh away from her body uh and she was clearly in the middle of the broadcast and then she stops and she looks and she lets out a squeal. Oh my gosh, it's the crew of the Defiant. And she turns and the camera immediately clicks right to all of you standing here on the front line. It's Charity here on the front lines of Kua where things are in a riot. I can't believe, Fucking of course nice. I believe that the heroes you can blame chat for this, that the heroes of the Third Horizon have shown up on the front lines. Tell us, how are you all feeling? Dot, I'd, uh -huh. like, I'd like to uh, do fuckery uh, and give you a darkness point by way of my talent that just gives okay. you darkness points. Um, okay. So my faceless one's talent lets me kind of do shit. Um, uh, I would like to reach over to Lamara uh, okay. who I'm sure has some sort of doctoral bag. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I'd like to reach my hand into it, rummage around for a second in this Mary Poppins purse, and produce what we all know is in the bottom of the bag. One grenade, please. All right, I will allow that because it is not a re-roll darkness point. And it is one, I can use that talent once per session. Okay, you reach in. Uh, to Lamara's bag, and of course, at the very bottom, past a syringe, and you know, a scalpel. Can open syringe. <laughs> no, yeah, no cap on it. Open it's like syringe. when the, like when whenever, the lipstick she, tube, she, the top <laughs> comes off the lipstick tube, <laughs> except yeah, it's syringes. She, uh, she's got in here. You reach in and you pull out from, of course, the very bottom, a grenade. And as the camera pans and the mic turns to all of you, Malik reveals a grenade. And I just want to, I want to hit the button on it because I imagine space grenades have buttons and I want to roll it under the barricade. Are you, do you want all this caught on film? I don't give a, I, I just made seven it, speeches that I'm fucking the star perfect. of a rebellion. On, Everybody, <laughs> so including you whoever's watching rebellion, this Malik broadcast <laughs> right now, uh, watches as this grenade like <laughs> almost slow motion rolls under and it is going to explode. I need everybody. Uh, I guess I need to roll for this grenade. Um, does the does the barricade protect us? <laughs> it will give you some. Uh, yes, it will give you some. Everybody's gonna get a. I'm gonna tell you all. You get a chance to react. How would you like to react? I, uh, I grab anyone that is near me and just act as a shield. Act as the shield. I'm try to push them away. Like I use my arms. Like move, move. <laughs> Who yeah. is looking at Malik, who had just said as as Charity was like turning, like <gasps> Tal goes, uh, Tal said, 
new plan. We're the distraction. And then Malik does that. So she looks at Malik and everybody sees Tal's face like, <laughs> like I'm going to fucking kill you myself. We said the same thing. You just said it out loud. <laughs> Charity goes because she's an idiot. She goes, oh my God, bomb. <laughs> The mom someone, goes into a full gift panic. That, please. <laughs> <laughs> the mom goes into a full panic. Uh, people begin running and pushing. It becomes full chaos. Two bit is gone. You do not see her any longer. The grenade goes off. Uh, it. I do you know how many grenades? I think it's like five d six, right? Uh, I don't remember, but yeah, let's go I with that. I think it's five d six. Okay, no success. When she yells bomb and it rolls between the legs of the guard that's standing there kind of with this this riot shield, they all turn, which means between the barricade and now their riot shields turn the wrong direction because they're idiots. It goes off and shields you all but blows their bodies backwards uh, your direction. Exploding the barricade, it moves to the side. Uh, one of them kind of dumps over uh, and moves to the side. What does everybody do? I feel like we probably all are hearing that ringing noise that happens if then a uh-huh. big explosion goes off. I think um, I think we're just I'm in shock and I'm just kind of yeah. uh, initially and then as, as things settle, <laughs> first thing I do is like ask the people that I'm nearby, like, are, are you OK? Are you fine? Are you yeah, hurt? you don't have time for that because as soon as the <laughs> explosion finishes, Tal grabs you where you were covering her and starts to shove you towards the barricade. We're going, come on. And you can't hear that because, you know, ringing, but we've been through several explosions. Tal's like mission. Uh, as Malik, the Malik, oh, yeah. Malik does the Malik does the same whether Tamir needs it or not. He just flails yeah, and no. grabs Tamir. It's Tamir's like he's got pulling his, him. Uh, his shock stick out, yeah. right? So anybody that gets in their way, it's just gonna get cattle prodded. Like, wow. Okay. Too, well, Pushing. Um. Who? Who? Like, yeah, who's boy. going first? Is it Alia? I need a force check from somebody to make path for y'all. Oh, that'll uh, probably be me because I'm the one pushing Alia. Right, Alia's <laughs> trying to help people. Then take yeah. a plus one for Alia. Okay. As shield. <laughs> <laughs> I'm <laughs> sorry. <laughs> like this, and then like you see Tal in the back, like go, go, go. <laughs> like people bulldozed out of the Failure. way. Failure. Front row seats. Okay. okay? <laughs> it is. It is chaos. And as the bomb goes off, or as this explosion goes off, I should say, uh, the bomb, quote unquote. I'm going to sneeze. <laughs> Sorry, y'all. Um, people panic, and fighting, once again, begins to break out. Uh, people are pushing and screaming. The mystics rush the monolith. That's what they, That's where they've been trying to get. And the homogeny uh, begins to shoot. Chaos breaks out. People are going down all over the place. Um, it is very difficult to get in the door right now. It's like a single double entryway that all of these people are trying to file through. Um, and you are kind of locked in the center of this as you hear people screaming and gunfire going off behind you. We keep going. We run, if, yeah. If there's, yeah if, uh, if I need there somebody else to make a ground. force check. Uh, to get you through, you need to like uh, push through. Basically, I have a question. I, I Do we point, see Alia two bit starts... anywhere? Uh, uh, roll a perception check if you want to try to spot two bit. In the meantime, I guess at this point, Alia. I mean, she realized she can't save these people and, and do anything. The primary thing is that can stop all this is going to that monolith, and so she uh, she will start shoveling people out of the way, almost like swimming and, and, and like. Move, 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 please, move, move. And you begin pushing people, and as Alia starts to kind of clear the way, Tal, you look up. Two-Bit is now uh, close to the second floor. She has climbed the building up and over the crowd and has gone in the second story window. All you got to do is get to the wall. You don't have to go to the door. And so uh, if you let Alia know this, she'll be able to clear a path for you. Okay, I say, Alia, wall, not door. Uh, And then... uh... I'm assuming you, she sees you point at. You see that, yeah, yeah. You see like the window and just the the tail end well, of Two Bit's foot. I don't point directly at Two Bit because I don't want anybody okay. else looking at Two Bit. But okay. I I you point up. Okay. Yeah, yeah, but just um, subtly. 
So you push basically to the wall, Alia, uh, and all of you will be able to make this climb check with this suit, mm. with the uh, cover. Uh, you're going to get some bonuses here, but this is going to be a check for everybody, and I still believe it's a, de- I think it's a dexterity check. I mean, let me look at a sheet here to show you that's what I wanted. Um, yeah, this is going to be a dexterity check if you are for this climb. If you are in the suit, you take a plus two. Okay. Tau, you have all... a. T- yes, and you have a. Um, Tau, you have a talisman. You're all in climb suits. Uh, do I, how do I? Because I have zero right now. How do I add plus two again? <laughs> uh, just you can do it. Um, uh, the best way to do it is just to roll. Uh, when it prompts you to say how many extra, you can put in two extra, uh, I believe. Or it doesn't let me. I click it and then it just. Then just says, roll. Then just roll two more d six. Roll uh, 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 slash. Is it R slash or slash? Uh, R uh, slash R space two d six. Although I already got one success, which is fantastic. I was. Yeah, never hurts. You don't know. Hey! Okay. Wait, single, no, single. Nope, that's that's together. So single success. Everybody succeeded. That's a plus. Woo-hoo. Um, let me see if Lamara succeeds because she's with you. Um, I say that I have too far too many character sheets in here, y'all. It's like we've been playing this game forever. <laughs> uh, Is she oh, in the she, suit too? She could make it. Yeah, she's in the suit too. So she gets a okay. She makes it too. Um, <laughs> so all of you, you watch as you get close to the wall. You know uh, that you kind of tap and it, and you can feel their kind of they. Your hands can't stick together. They're kind of anti-magnetized. Uh, but as they get close to the wall, they... Zoom, and then your feet kind of... You tap your heels. Dink, dink. Same thing. And all of you begin scaling the wall up to the second story of the monolith. Um, you all make it in the window. Lickety split, no problem. Uh, but Tubit is currently nowhere to be found. And you can see on this floor, it's kind of like an open balcony that has a, a staircase that goes down to the first floor. And you can see, and here, the first floor is packed with people. It echoes in the chambers of the high ceilings of this monolith. Um, yeah. We spent a very long time studying this between the time that we got it initially and now. Um, so essentially Tal is going to make for the most direct route, since we don't have to worry about stairs, we can just climb the fucking walls. Uh, Tal is going to look for the most direct route to the place we actually need to be now. Originally, you thought you were going to need to go up and you were going to climb from the outside, but you know that the center shaft has had an elevator attached to it. You all could climb the elevator shaft down and bypass the stairs and people all together. Then that's where we're going. So I won't make you make another check. Once Y'all again. begin to kind of spider climb. I mean, it, it's very, it's very cool uh, as you all begin to kind of like, you know, de, 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 and you kind of crawl on the ceilings uh, down and around and you hit the elevator oh. shaft. You, oh, yeah. When we start this, I say uh, crawl close to this line uh, because if a, uh, if the elevator comes through, you want to be able to get into one of these notches really quickly. Um, and as you crawl, oh, is it? Let me take that down. Boop. Ha. Better? Nice. Sorry about that. Uh, you kind of, uh, up and around the ceiling, you crawl down, you kind of go around this corner, and you can see the elevator shaft. You actually manage to pry it open. It's not currently working. It's, like, on its caution or, like, stops process. And you, uh, pry, are able to pry the elevator doors open pretty easily and climb down the elevator shaft. Um... As all of you kind of begin to scale down, and as you do, the sound of gunfire and screaming dissipates. And as you get to the bottom, uh, you again pry the doors open, and as you do, it's quite a sight to behold. People have poured already poured into the space down the stairs and have filled it. And Tubid stands in front of this column, this like very uh, ancient and kind of special looking uh, console in front of her Um, and she looks up and sees all of you across the way Um, a few people uh shout at her um, but most everybody in here are mystics and they're all holding hands and they're swaying two bits you shout up kind of up and over the crowd a little bit um and she looks up and makes eye contact with you. Um, 
And she begins to kind of press these plates on this console in a certain order as as she begins to like activate it or do whatever she's going to do. Um, I'm going to spend our last corruption bar. I still have four darkness points, but I will spend our last corruption bar. The broadcast, the uh, original broadcast as well as Charity's broadcast, has informed the second or the first horizon that you have you have moved the plans up. They weren't going to attack until tomorrow. And they now know that you're here. And if you were outside through the thunder, you'd hear the sounds of, pl- of uh, aircrafts entering atmosphere as they break through the sound barrier. They dive down and the first explosion happens near the mouth of the monolith and then another on the other side of Covenant City. They begin to bomb the people outside and you can hear a as the it's happening above you uh, and the ceiling kind of crumbles a little bit down. Some people shield themselves. Some of the mystics don't even move. They stay in their trance holding hands. I think we need to go. You were supposed to get her here. She's here now. She needs to activate. Okay. Well, we need to do something about the planes and I can't do anything from here. What are we going to do out there? Shoot him with our pistol? Just you s- th- oh, go ahead. Oh, no. You see two bit kind of finish whatever they're going to put in. And they, they kind of, uh, they put both hands on this like center piece and press it. And you see it begins to like, and it stops. And two bit looks over and shouts over the crowd, there's not enough power. KP, you're muted. How can we, how can we give more power? What what do we do? KP, we got a uh, KP. <laughs> Alia, we gotta go up. Original you do, plan. in fact, Tamir know exactly where the battery packs Shit. are. We gotta go up. I guess we're going up. Boo, 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 boo. Yo, all the way up, and you climb and you climb. You know it's actually for floor like uh like 28 or 29. <laughs> for y'all so you all climb up this empty elevator shaft uh the elevator is almost like 30 floors even above where you are now and as you kind of pry it open and you all get off you can see it this massive kind of generator um and it looks like it's taken some damage there's a hole in the wall nearby from the recent explosion and a large piece of debris has kind of bashed one of the sides and the reactor this large battery is unstable I think Samir's going to immediately rush over to it and with whatever knowledge he has of reactors, I think he's going to A, use Gearhead so he okay. can rig up uh, and tinker something that can work once as well as plug in to the power console with Ari. This is old technology they need to harness the old technology uh-huh not okay the modern stuff um i need a technology role from you what would you like to do brother dearest i well i was gonna have another sweaty engine room scene but now that he's it, it, you plug it into the matrix um is there a console here he's Doc? protected it's there's like maybe a small one on so what it looks like is the original power source has been um revamped with new power sources Okay. So they've kind of like augmented it. So they w- might have a console for the pieces that they put in, but it seems to be attached to a larger, more ancient piece of technology. Cool. I just had a fucking image in my head. Um, <laughs> Gnome, Tamir has a port, right? Yeah, in his, in his neck. Great. Yeah. Uh, Malik's, yeah. Malik's seen it. I had to hack your brain. I remember. Yeah. I remember yeah. this. Um, Malik, <laughs> like, I feel like there's some synergy and Malik understands what Tamir's about to do. And he reaches into his bag and um, pulls out a uh, 1992 uh, Game Boy uh, attachment cable that connects multiple Game Boys. Uh, and he's going to plug his data pad exactly in, that cable, that plug one cable. into, we'll give one to Tamir, and then plug one into the machine. Uh, so the three of them have a T connection, so he can assist <laughs> Tamir 
in in the mind wow. space. <laughs> um. <laughs> Oh my, oh my god this is so kind of weird okay um so uh this is a weird ass threesome um good thing aurora matured uh oh god she's no, of god. age now oh, no. um, god. You, i'm just saying it's a good thing god. that being said you this cable goes from here to there and there to there and everybody quickly plugs in um you can see that the debris is still smashing one half of the reactor it's going to be a very heavy piece of rock would you like uh, to try to move it alia and tal will probably work on that yeah, yeah. i need a force check girls. and then one of you can help the other uh um, where's why did i lose this hold up uh force uh how much do you have in force one okay i have two so okay, okay. i'll help you <laughs> so you take uh, the plus I... one alia okay uh shoot i hope it did let me does why does it not let me okay one uh, so this is without the plus one so our oh one. i know why if you go to the top of your character sheet it says modifiers you should check the box that uh, says add prompt in roll so it can oh, prompt you each time okay. for yeah. the additional modifier uh yeah i didn't get it okay um oh you try to move it and it's simply too heavy and it's kind of sparking uh mm. which is is hard on like the eyes and the and the skin as you try to move it but to no avail uh lumara is going to come help i don't know that she will be much help uh but she can sure try i don't think she has any force she does not so she's just gonna give it all she's got Hey, Lamar oh. <laughs> comes over the third hand and the, the three ladies like yeah. and lift this massive rock uh, off and it smashes to the side into kind of dusty, smaller pieces. And you can see the damage that's now actually done to it. We flip back to the brothers. Uh, Tamir is hacking into his brother's head, who is hacking into this reactor core or other way around. Great. Oh, right, because, that yeah, is duh. Okay, that is correct. Okay, great. Yeah, duh, other way around. Yeah, Mal Malik's a top. A t right. As, as has been we established. Had permission I need, to enter. you know what? I don't need to know. I just need a data gen <laughs> role from Malik and a science role from Tamir. That's what I need. Uh, do I get anything with. Um, um, I'm going to let you each. Oh, yes, you'll get. Um, go ahead and take a plus one bonus like everybody else with the help of Ari. I'll take a uh, one. Uh, Data Wow, I forgot how my sheet works. So I get a plus one from Ari. Is that what I just heard? Uh, yeah, I guess you're plugged in too, right? <laughs> Fuck yeah, hey! I'm back, baby! Pow, pow! Um, so here's what's up. You get in there, and Ari very quickly tells you that the issue that is going on right now is uh obviously this damage and what can possibly be done. These reactors, you can move the power from the broke one over to the other two but it may cause them to overcharge but it will be enough for two bit to do what two bit needs to do malik you actually end up helping write you can you if that's what you choose to do you can write the code to make that happen your critical success will make that happen um but no matter what because you're kind of overloading the other two it will eventually explode at some time with your critical success, I will be able to let you set a little bit more of a timer. It might explode in five minutes and more like 10 minutes. I've overclocked Ari. <laughs> yeah, basically. Um, and so so now you're kind of like quick writing this code and Ari's trying to, 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 to try to uh, reroute power. Uh, and you'll be able to tell with your critical success how much time you have before these reactors, um, well, do what they do. Yeah, I'm, I'm basically trying to dump as much time as we possibly can. I'd say with the critical success of a four, the most you'd get is 10 minutes. Okay. From the point of, of like, setting it. And I can set it to, like, start now. Yes. Okay, cool. Yeah, so I would set it for, like, I don't know. We, we've climbed up and down this thing a couple times. I'm going to, whatever the time <laughs> it takes us to climb, that's when it will start. Like, once we hit the bottom. Okay, cool. Um... It is set, and you hear the like boop uh, as the kind of timer that you have set, maybe on a watch or your data pad, begins. Great. Um, I right-click eject watches, media from Tamir. Right, boop, to take your brother out safely, and uh, you uh, 
<laughs> you uh you see that the reactor kind of glows the two, the two of three pods go brighter as you give 50 percent more to one and 50 percent more to the other and they like and they kind of blow outwards and then you hear it the sound of the weapon as it begins to activate and i will read you from the book what this says the book we're actually going to the module we're actually going to the module for this piece look at us uh and you know what just because i have it here it goes okay somewhere the interior Michael is fully erect <laughs> right? Uh, there's a lens flare to top it off. The interior of the monolith shakes and pulsates. Crackling discharge shoots out from the planet. The artifact's protective shell of coral metal breaks apart and is pulverized in rain of dust and falling rock. The mist sinks to reveal the dark core, a sword measuring four kilometers in height and 300 meters in width. Made from perfectly cut hexagonal metal columns fused together and gleaming in the sunlight. I should say, wet in the rain. The conglomerate is covered in glittering mineral dust and the rivers in the delta turn black. As the shells fall, Sky City and the capital of the homogeny falls with it. Rippling outward from the fall, the Zenithian leadership new quake opens up the earth and new plateaus begin to rise among the equator. Deep wounds in the ground lead the rivers to form new lakes and enormous dams that protect districts of the city from flooding stand firm. Perhaps they are gifts from earlier generations who experienced the power of the monolith for themselves once before. Across the conglomerate lowlands, valleys are flooded and underwater caves drain, exposing ancient ruins and hidden treasures. The monolith's discharge travels upward through the atmosphere and strikes the Coriolis station high above the city with a lance thrust of fire. The ring is torn from its spokes and it crashes into the tip of the spire. The waters and forests of Lake Apara freeze in the vacuum as its fleets of legion and the homogeny burn and disappear in the bright flashes of light like a swarm of fireflies. The station hangs in silence for a second and not on hope seems lost. But then the lights go out, section by section, and the enormous grave protectors of the cellar, they give up. The station, Coriolis, now spinning, starts falling into the atmosphere. As its hull catches fire, the reactors explode, and a blinding light flashes across the jungle. Zazina's dying breath, as bright as a star. The explosion turns the rest of the station into a rain of burning meteorites. Parts of the core crash into the Gurid Sea, and bring it to a boil. The rest is shattered over the woods of the valley and the plateaus. The bombardment of leave forest, leaves forest fires, earthquakes, and level cities in its wake. Wounds that, given time, might heal, but that will scar the third horizon long after the end of the last cycle. And you watch this devastation and the sword as it juts out the center of this building and rushes past all of you. The countdown continues. But outside, people are crushed by the falling Coriolis. I will spend darkness points right now. The dams hold, saving a large part of the city from flooding. A helpful darkness point. Because of the work that you did leading up to this and solving the mystery, Coriolis did its best to reposition itself, which means only half of the space station broke off and fell into the atmosphere. The other half has been knocked into space, off course, and floats without any kind of power or support. With two darkness points left, the countdown continues to boop, boop, boop. Debris falls around you. The monolith that you stand in is beginning to collapse. Yeah, we should go. We should we go. We have to get to it. 
okay. Ah, where is two bit? Can we see two bit? Two bit is in the basement, about twenty something floors right. down. How long do we have? Eight minutes. Not enough time get to ship. get in and get out. We got. We gotta go. All these people that. Did we know, out of, out of curiosity, out of character, did we know that would be the result of this at all? Okay. In, in, okay. Now, that being said, you don't hear homogeny ships or First Horizon ships bombing anymore. They have all been fried out of the sky. It did that thing, exactly what it was supposed to do, a shield. Um, but now this is crumbling and Coriolis was basically in its wake, right? It it was just aimed at Coriolis, and now Coriolis is falling down around you, um, literally burning through the atmosphere like meteorites as they land. Uh, it's to the point, and it's such great devastation, that the physical landscape of Kua is changing. <clears throat> yeah, we need to get to the ship now before it's no longer cool. existent. Um, this, this being the second time Tal has said that, uh, Malik still has his data pad out, and he's furiously punching at things on his screen. Um, from season two, throwback, um, I have uh, a remote control module in the crawler. Um, I am remote piloting the crawler uh, as best I can to uh, get to us. All right. You are under some debris right now. So mm -hmm. I am going to have you make, I get, well, it's a, it's a data gen check. You're, you're, uh, you know, hacking it. See if you can get it to you. That's pretty brilliant. Love One it. success. Okay, a single success is enough. It takes a lot, and you you only realize when you boot it up that it's like, woo, 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 and it's under something. And you're able to, like, whip its legs around, and it lifts the debris off itself with its spider limbs. And it crawls out um, of the, the debris and begins its kind of spider walk down the streets. Um, it is chaos. People are screaming and yelling. Some people beat on the hull, but they can't quite get in. Um, there you go. Uh, but it is on the way. It's going to be a little bit before it gets there. A couple minutes, probably. Okay, our ride's coming. We gotta go. Give, yeah. give me a minute. Just a minute. Don't have even one minute. We have Set seven minutes and 32 seconds. All right, let's go. Come on. You said it's two I'm gonna timers. mind walk. Oh. I want to make sure that Tubit is doing what Tubit is supposed to be doing. We don't know if this was the right the reaction that was supposed to happen. It's true. Um, roll a um, mind walking. So go ahead and roll, because Tao's going to do it with you, so you're going to get a plus one for Tao because you don't have a choice, basically. Tao is connected to your mind walking. Sorry. Um, uh, Tao's connected. I said uh, go ahead roll and do it. Roll it with the plus one, your mystic ability check. Okay, a single success. Um you take a second, you really try to concentrate, and Tao, as much as you try not to, your head juts back, as so does um, Tamir's. Alia, you see this. Is, is this the first time you see them do it together? Uh, I, I mean, isn't this what no, we, I knew the, that they're No, this. you knew yeah. that, that's right, that's right. You knew that because it, it was kind of, uh, that's right, right. That's that right, the, that's yeah, right. That, and that was the reason I came on is because they mm -hmm. have this. Like well, it, they make it look very easy. You can tell that they are getting stronger as they immediately drop into the trance. And you're both met with the what you would consider the ringing of light. That like pinging like... And it's so bright you can barely see. And in this light, uh, you see the silhouette, the silhouette of Tubit. Their arms are outstretched, their legs outstretched. You can see that their head is tipped back. Light pours from, if you, what little bit you can tell, their orifices. But mostly their body seems indescript, just in silhouette of all of this light. You have only seconds. Tubit. Yes. yes. Is this it for you? This, this is only the beginning. How much longer do you need? Not, Not long now. The, the weapon, weapon has... The, the shield has already been activated. My, my time is limited. Is there anything you must... You, you must go, go to near. I will see you among the stars. Thank 
Thank you for everything. And take care of Aurora. You're going to need her on your next journey. It is a promise I will keep until I can no longer. Journey well to Mir. Emissary for the machine. The light kind of gets more vibrant. Her body disappears in a vast uh, span of whiteness. And both of you like <gasps> come to. They might have been out 10, 12 seconds. Used to doing this, I immediately grab Tamir and like clutch his hand and say, we have to go. He's crying, but he doesn't hesitate. Not yeah. this time. And everybody grabs hands. You feel Lamara's grip yours very tightly as you all begin to run to try to get out of here to make it to the crawler. Malik, you can see the crawler is almost there. And as you round a corner to go downstairs to maybe find a way out, in the hallway stands a woman. She looks like Lamara. A jinn. We hear the sound of all of your feet and these suits kind of come to a squeaking halt on marble floor, at least what's left of it. And dust and rubble around you, people screaming and crying in chaos outside. And she smiles, this corrupt smile. Yes. For our last two darkness points, she says, what kind of jinn would I be if I didn't grant your wish? Happy traveling, Alia. And she claps twice. All of your vision is blacked for a moment. The sound of death and chaos, of great ruin, of children crying, of blood being spilled, and of a great space station falling from the sky. It all disappears. And you find yourself, all of you, Lamara included, in your clothes. Your feet come beneath you. You're on the defiant. Tal, you feel your steering wheel beneath your hands. And you feel the defiant almost come out of light speed in some way, as if it was going fast and it stops. And as it does, in front of you is a planet you've never seen before. Really? a corruption bar i was oh, gonna do something but i think thanks, now Melissa. i'm going to i'm going to make it uh i'm going to change that and i'll tell you at the end what i change you hear sally come over the inner captain something has happened my connection to the main computer on coriolis has been severed it seems we are on no map that I have in record. Uh. Well, good thing this ship was made to discover new places. This is, in fact, Captain. It doesn't even match our current star date. From what I can tell, we've traveled almost 50 years into the future. I'm sorry, into the past. <clears throat> if what, my what? Cal if my calculations are correct the dead planet you see in front of you is planet earth and if that is true then we are currently stationed in the first horizon uh tamir I, I think we need some of your data. Yes, uh, of course. As soon as Alia, because everybody heard this, right? Uh-huh. As soon as Alia hears that, you see her just collapse on the floor, on the ground, and then desperately tries to reach out to the Lady of the Tears. Uh, okay, let's get a mystic check. Okay. Come on, baby. I've been rolling good. Uh, wait. The blessing I have. 
You're also uh, on the yeah. ship. You're also yeah. on the ship. So I can do a plus one? Yeah. Well, if there's no icons, there's no blessing. You don't know yet. I mean, I already blessed my like the crew. I forget if that the mass blessing includes me in it or she blessed your sword. Maybe you could hold that and take the blessing from it. Okay. Okay. I'll do plus one for that. Come on, baby. Oh, thank God. Okay. Uh, what did you roll? A okay. Two. Um, the same experience once again. She stands before you, um, uh, looking down on you. You see Alia like tense up, and then as soon as she sees the Lady of Tears, she she calms down. She goes, "Oh, I thought, I, I thought, I thought I may have lost you." Uh, you are very far away now, Alia. I am weak and fading. I cannot see you. Is it true? I, I don't know what happened, but we, if it's true, we are in the first horizon. We're, it's, it's ridiculous. It's, there's no way. There's, they don't have that much power. They can't. Find your way home, Alia. Find your way home. What do I, what can we do next? And she's gone. And as you come out of the trance, your team stands before you once again. We are alone and far. We're Even not alone. the icons can't reach us well here. We don't need the icons right now. Right now, we need ourselves. Tamir plugs in. Okay. Hey. All right. Tamir. Hey. It's been so long. Longer than you may think. Strange. Something seems familiar. That's what I wanted to know. Supposedly we are back in the first horizon. In a place called Earth. That's impossible, isn't it? So many things are impossible. I will update Sally's... Data maps to Thank include you. the star systems in the first horizon. Thank you, Ari. Is it true? We are 50 years in the past. I don't know if that is true. I have no way to verify. Do you know what this means? No, please tell me. It means that we have time to stop the first horizon. From ever crossing into the third horizon. We have time to stop their plans. And I think that like really dawns on Tamir. <sighs> Two bit was right. You are a gift and a blessing. I'll send another location to Sally's computer. It's a nearby space station. You want to lie low. I don't think any of you look like First Horizoners. You're probably right. Thank you, Ari. And as you come back to, the, yeah, and you unplug, yeah. you see that there's kind of a moment as this comes through. And since we got an extra corruption bar right here at the end, because you've gone back in time, there's another wish that has not been fulfilled. The mysticides have not been stopped yet. And so in one of the doorways, maybe at the very back of the mess hall, staring down the hallway at all of you trying to figure out what's going on, is the small face of a child who has hitched a ride. He'll stay here as long as he can hide out here. But he is not out of his wish yet, and he must follow you until the end. The camera sees the crew of the Defiant floating in an entirely new system, the First Horizon, sent back by a simple wish that our family and friends would not be harmed during the oncoming war. I, correction, she said the Third Horizon shouldn't, the people of the Third Horizon should The people of the th Third Horizon doesn't matter. You're still sent back to save them all. Yep. Yep. The Jin may not do the job for you, but she has set you up. 
so that this crew, a pilot, a scientist, a code breaker, a priestess, and a doctor are lost to another time and place. The story for the crew of the Defiant does not end here. It simply begins again. As a wish has granted them a second chance of saving those that they love the most and keeping the darkness and the void at bay. What they choose to do now is entirely their own. They may have to find a new home and new friends, but in 50 years' time, they know. The icons, they send emissaries, and those emissaries activate an ancient piece of technology that breaks apart the world as you know it. What will the crew of the Defiant do? Given the opportunity to rewrite time. But this is not the story that this game has told. And as that story comes to a close, I'd like for all of you to go around and tell me what is going through each of your characters' heads as you stare off at a burnt earth, at a sky full of space stations and ships that are unknown to you, with only the four people around you as the only known family or friends that at the moment you have left. And we will start with our pilot, our captain. Well, uh, inner monologue of Tal sounds something along the lines of, fuck. Fuck, I don't know anybody. I don't, I don't know anything about this place. Fuck. I haven't even been born yet. Fuck. That's that's it. Yeah. Just Fuck. trying to <laughs> Fuck says the subtitle across the screen. I haven't <laughs> even been born yet. She's she's trying to wrap her head around time travel and also the fact that she's in a place that she has never even imagined being. Yep. Fuck. And the camera pans quickly over to your right, which stands uh, Tamir. Tamir, what runs through your head as you stare out at a burnt earth and a first horizon? There are so many probabilities. But I think as Tamir reaches out to his brother and takes his hand as if he were a little boy, there's that spark of hope of something so suppressed for so long, they could save their parents. And the camera cuts down to your hand and then back up to the person holding it, your brother. Malik. You're muted. A moment ago, there was no internal monologue. There was um, fragments of words and sentences as both of you, as the only sound in the ship is the of fingers typing on the screen here. As Malik realized that we have 50 years in the future tech and 50 years in the future knowledge how do I best utilize that? <laughs> and then one hand gets taken and there's that like look without words uh, from, from Tamir. And the, like, there's like a quizzical look back from Malik and then he realizes it as well. Uh, and his other hand swipes a few things, stretches a few things. Uh, and you see a, uh, 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 a timeline of Algol on the screen. 
as your brother begins to plot. And from the screen to Alia. I think you're muted. I was just thinking, I think Alia is just blank um, and trying to process the reper repercussion of her wish about how, and trying to understand, because I, I had, did she realize that, or she didn't hear the the conversation between, obviously between uh, Tamir and uh, uh, what was two bit. the, yeah, uh, huh? Two bit? No, not two bit. Uh, the, the one just now about we could save. She just knows that oh, we've been oh, sent two, back. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Ari, to Ari, yeah. yeah. To Ari. But yeah, so she just knows that they've been set back 50 years and into the first horizon. Um, and being the only person that has ever connected directly with the ship and seen the malice and the 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 intent and actually seen mm -hmm. the result after all that, you see her initially panicking at her decision, like what what has she done? But then as that realization dawns, the fact that she's basically behind enemy lines, um, you see her calm down, take a deep breath, and then she just thinks, whatever, whatever may come. And then looks at the rest of the crew from, the, from back there. Like I, I'm assuming they're in front of her in the, near the cockpit. And then she goes, and then she nods and, and kind of just smiles and then goes to the kitchen to make some chai for everybody. The sound of the pot and the kettle begins and the camera pans to the last person on the crew, Lamara, and a single tear rolls down her face of sadness. It's like she knew. She'd seen it before. The fall of Kua and a prophecy. And the camera pans out of the cockpit of the Defiant. Kind of looking back at the ship in the darkness of space. Stars here seem much dimmer, a little sadder. The darkness has taken hold much bigger here. The spaces between the stars are larger. But the lights on the Defiant still shine bright against the empty darkness of space, shining like a star in itself, brighter than any of the other ones in the sky. The Defiant, beacon of light and hope, a star that fights against the darkness, the light that will stop the void. And this story comes to a close as the crew of the Defiant floats endlessly in a new place in time, plotting their next move to save those that they love the most. We've come to the end, everybody. How are we feeling? I feel amazing. Well done, Dot. There's so uh, many that... emotions. Well done. I... Beautiful. Unforgettable. That was. And I who was knows what will happen for this crew? Well done. Whew. Well, we've got 10 minutes, y'all, before I have to, like, like maybe skedaddle don't fret i bet a lot of you have questions i have promised mike that i will do a gm talk to answer all your unanswered questions um and bits and pieces but um you know yeah don't we yeah. do the after show live this time yeah i guess so we have 10 minutes what yeah, let's, let's, do it. Let's, <laughs> do the, let's do it after show live. Let's, let's, it. let's swing it around town, guys. Instead of outros, we're gonna do uh, we're gonna do our stars and wishes, uh, and then we're gonna do a GM uh, and casting crew uh, post mortem uh, after some time. We've all had time to process. I'm gonna start with uh, with Gnome. What are your stars and wishes? You're always prepared to go first. I'm definitely always prepared to go first. I mean, come on. There, there's there's only one star. Like of of, of all the stars that are here, like that said. That made this happen. Oh, that. Thank you. Thank you Two all. Two years. Two years. Yeah, we you came together at the plan. most unexpected expected time too. Yeah, that was, was kind of something beautiful about the us. Pandemic. Yeah. And 
you let us tell this wild story and go off the rails and still bring in like official stuff in our own stuff in your own stuff there is no one out there that gms like you that no no one thank you what's your wish there's 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 no no wish this is the end there's no wish that's it. it it might not be the end I mean, maybe what, what you would wish well, to happen, but technically. Um, in mm-hmm. that case, Aris, what about you? What are your what are your stars and possible wishes? I don't have wishes because this is the finale. <laughs> I'm just saying. It's all right. A star, a star. Okay. Uh, so I, I'm gonna say, uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna like cheap out on here and say the star is all of you because oh. this. This story would not be the same without every single person on this stream. And yes, Paul, I mean you too. Yep. Because agreed. you yep. might not be here because of work obligations, but you are a hundred percent still part of this crew. And a big star to to everybody because it, it was from first to last, it was a extremely beautiful story. Yes. And they're Oh, hot diggity dog. I'm going to, I'm going to have some grief over this. I'm, I'm probably going to grief the story just because it, it's, oh God. it's, it's in there. It's in my heart. Yeah. Mm. Okay. KP. Oh, oh boy. Um, I, I I mean I'm not not to follow in the same footsteps as theirs, but I I mean I have a specific reason why I want to give this, but I my star goes to all of you, not just because of how amazing of players you guys are and how amazing of a story this was and how well you guys went through all of it from start to finish, and I've said this before, but as someone who started out as as a viewer that got a chance to binge watch the entire three seasons before having the absolute privilege of joining you all in as a cast member on this. I can't, I can't, I, I cannot even begin to tell you how happy, how lucky I am that I get got to be a part of all this. And Mm. I can't thank you guys enough for having me on to go on this journey because it's not easy to bring someone on midway through a campaign and especially <laughs> after you lose uh you know someone who you started with who a fellow crew member uh, and and to have someone brand new not know whether or not they will gel not know how it's gonna go and you guys made me feel wel- welcome from the start and i i made some of my closest friends through this you guys yep. have are truly the best crew I could have ever imagined to have ever played with and have been able to tell the story with. And to see this get completed with all of you yeah. is yeah. the greatest privilege that I can ever, ever, ever ask for. And, and I'm just so over the moon that it's not the end. That's, that's the thing. It's, I, we, it's maybe the end of this specific story whether or not we have another season, whatever happens later on, I know for a fact that we're going to tell more stories together. We have so many more things that we want to share with the world, so many more ideas and characters. And I'm just excited. And I guess that's my wish is to see what that next story we tell together is, because I know it's just going to be just as glorious, just as beautiful and heartfelt and epic as this one was, because it's, be- it's with you guys um, at the table. Uh, and I just wanted to let you all know that how um, how truly amazed I am by all of you. So thank you. Uh. Fuck you. <laughs> You're next, Mike. Uh, um, <laughs> so I I'm I I am gonna echo what everyone said. Uh, so I agree. Um, so I'm gonna do a different star, uh, which is uh, you, audience. Um, this show was amazing for all the reasons everyone already said. Uh, I uh, 100% agree with every sentiment there. Um, the demand for a season two is why there was a season two. 
Um, Dot and I planned this show and we had no intention of multi-season. We were just like, everyone likes this. You just want to keep going? Uh, And everyone was on board. Um, Season three uh, literally wouldn't exist without you. We crowdfunded season three. um, And if we didn't hit our goal, which I think we hit in like an hour, um, we weren't going to do a season three. Um, And then season four just sort of fell into our lap. Uh, The stars aligned literally uh, or figuratively in this case. And, uh, and, and it just, it just so happened the 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 book came out and we were like, look, you guys want to keep, keep rocking and rolling. And that's what it was. But if it weren't for you guys watching um, you guys talking about the show, the fan art, the, the, the watch throughs, someone live tweeted 40 episodes of this on Twitter. Um, we wouldn't, we wouldn't be here. We wouldn't be having this episode. We wouldn't be having this, uh, this show would have ended a year ago. Um, so my star is you guys, uh, is everything everyone said and you guys. Um, and my wish is, uh, is a new story. Well, <laughs> you might just get that, Mike. Um, okay, my star. Uh, whew. Um, I'm going to give it to... Um, well, I'm going to do the, that thing and give it to the players as well. Because, honestly, this is the first long-term campaign. This is the longest campaign I've ever closed out. Um, playing with people. Um, in terms of, like, I think hours spent. Um, I'm sure down the road I'll close out some of the other long-term stuff I'm a part of, but as a GM, this was, and, and as a story, I think I wanted to tell, uh, I appreciate you all trusting me, um, to like come to the table, to tell a story that, that, that is like this, uh, that is a little bit heavier, that, that does, uh, pull deeply on our humanity and our empathy and what it means to like negate the darknesses of space. Um, and these were some of the things I wanted to play with. And all of you trusted me to bring that to the table and let me, Trusted me to let me do that uh, for four fucking seasons, nonetheless. So uh, I, I, uh, I really, really appreciate that. And as KP said, you know, along the way, I made some of my absolute best friends in the whole world. Uh, and that's kind of just makes me lucky, really. That's not even a that's like a gold star for me. Um, that's a gold star for me. Uh, so, yeah, it. Uh, yeah, it's very uh, this has been a very personal campaign. I knew from the moment I picked Coriolis up, I wanted to run it. And when I brought it to Mike, there was. I wouldn't say hesitation, but he was like, okay, are you sure? Um, and I was like, yes, this is the one I want to run. Like, I have this thing I want to do, the story I want to tell, and I want the right people. And finding the right people along the way have been half the joy of this campaign. So thank you all for making it um, a space that I could I could do that, and I could cut my GM teeth in a new way. Hell freaking yeah. Um, the last thing I'm going to say, I'm going to close this out with, uh, we're not doing outros, we're just going to say bye. Um, but... <laughs> The next story may not be a Coriola story, but we can officially announce. Um, I was hoping you were going to do If you're this. a fan of Hot Dice Daddies, you already got a sneak peek. Um, yeah. But we are officially announcing a long-term campaign. Uh, there is no scheduled end date. There is no scheduled seasons. Uh, it will run until either we get bored or it concludes. Um, we will be playing the One Ring 2nd Edition. I will be hopping over into the Game master seat. Um... And we'll be running into the uh, the third age of Middle Earth, uh, and uh, it'll be a good time. It'll be a good time. I think Dot has a mustache. Um, uh, it's gonna be it's gonna be great. It's gonna be great. Uh, so we're gonna be slinging some dice. Uh, we're gonna be going on some journeys. We're gonna be finding some artifacts. We're gonna be fighting back the darkness. Uh, as we are wont to do here on this channel. Uh, so if you are a fan of Lord of the Rings, a uh, fan of the Hobbit, it's not gonna be that. Uh, but you'll enjoy the ride nonetheless. Uh, so come hang out. We're coming back soon. I don't have exact dates because my mind is a pile of mush right now. Uh, but we are absolutely going to be running some uh, One Ring 2nd Edition. And I cannot wait and, uh, to jump and, in. And what better way, I think, for us to go, as, as, as the famous quote says, and the road goes ever on and on. Song. Yeah. It's true. Yep. Down from the and door where it began. Uh, and yeah. that's it, friends. We're out of here. We'll see you next time. From all of us to you. Bye-bye. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye.